kid, I, uh, my mom was cutting my hair, and we were watching the Twin Peaks pilot as it aired in the kitchen on a little black and white TV. And it was the Sunday movie of the week, so I was like, this is going to be crap, Mom. I don't want to watch your Sunday movie of the week. <laughs> and uh, it turned out to be the pilot of the Twin Peaks, and I was hooked. And the moment Agent Cooper was laying on the floor shot, the old man kept checking on it for 15 minutes, and Mom bailed. And I continued and watched this incredible show. So, mm. so you, to me, getting into film, were what I saw first time I remember seeing acting. And acting to the point where I, when you lost your daughter, when you said my daughter's dead, I was falling. I had never had my heart broken. I never had anyone in my family die yet. So it was like my first feeling of like grief was seeing you lose your daughter. Wow. I was nine. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to choke up. <laughs> oh no. No, but uh, and then and then you, uh, you're why I wanted to date the cheerleader in high school. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not about me, it's about all of you. Thank you so much for coming to this. Yes, this thank amazing. you. Well, you made it through the movie, huh? <laughs> so what, I bet it wasn't easy, I know. A real feel-good feel good flick. <laughs> yeah, we've seen it a few times. And, uh, um, it's funny, you know, when that movie opened in Cannes and, at the festival, um, the audience actually booed it. It's terrible. Yeah, and uh, David walked out after a few minutes and the booing continued. <laughs> yeah. Tonight we celebrate with cheers. Yeah. yeah! <laughs> but then every succeeding year, the movie kept getting better and better. <laughs> it didn't change, but it kept getting better and better and better. Until now, well, for my money, I think it's uh, one of David's masterpieces. Yeah. Right? And this girl. Well, this guy. Yeah, <laughs> what she went through, that was uh, an amazing tour de force, that performance. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Really. <laughs> Yeah, we tried to keep it light in between takes. You know. <laughs> tried to hug each other a lot and joke a little bit, and, you know, and, and then get back to the serious stuff. It would, we managed to keep our sanity throughout all of it. And uh, we had a great time. This is happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, we want to make sure that uh, everyone in the audience that wants to ask a question gets to ask a question. And, uh, and uh, wow, here's question number one. Uh, please speak loudly. So uh, I'm a uh, first generation Twin Peaks fan, so it's amazing to have you both here. All right. Question for Ray. Well, you look old enough. <laughs> <laughs> so for Ray, um, in my opinion, you were criminally underused in Twin Peaks season three. Did you have a discussion with David about, about that? I was criminally underused <laughs> in season three. That's a wonderful way of putting it. I feel the same way. Uh, I wanted to be in it more. Uh, I remember when we were told that they were, he was going to do it. David uh, called, called me on the phone. I wasn't there to pick it up, but I have an answering machine. And I played the machine and it said, um, hello, Ray. <laughs> David Lynch here. How you doing? Hope you're doing great. Uh, and then uh, he went on to say that he was going to get back to me uh, and oh, or to, to call him back. So I called him back and he said, we're going to do season three. And, um, and that I would be in it. And I thought, oh boy, this is going to be something. It was something uh, for everybody else, <laughs> but not for me. And I wanted, you know, I thought when, uh, when, <laughs> I thought when we did the Between Two Worlds thing, you know, I thought it would be more of that. That we would go in this world and then that, the real world and then that world. And, the, and then I had another brilliant idea. I said, maybe Leland has a twin brother, Leonard. <laughs> Leonard Palmer, why not? You know, give him a little bald spot, maybe a mustache. You know? Nah, he wouldn't go for it. 
I think it was Mark Frost that uh, ruined that idea. <laughs> anyway, no, I, yeah, I felt, uh, I, I, I enjoyed season three and I thought visually, it was visually stunning. Uh, and um, she was excellent in it again. And, and I was happy the way it ended up at the Palmer House. I missed you. Oh, thank you. I missed you too. Dressing room, <laughs> the honey wagon dressing rooms. But you know, we all had, we all shared the same kind of dressing room, so nobody was really special except for Kyle. He had his own trailer. <laughs> <laughs> this is the for the for the past thirty five years. Mm -hmm. Sure. The whole thing. Um, I have one. <laughs> it's uh, thinking about my parents. And, and knowing that they, um, now because I'm a parent, sorry, I'm hitting my mic everywhere, I forgot that I have more than one mic. <laughs> um, as a parent, I can only imagine what that would feel like to see, even though you would know that it's acting and you know that it's pretend and they've met David and David is so nice and loving to them and warm to the people that he meets and, um, and they knew that I wanted to act, and um, so they were supportive of all of us kids creatively. But I still um, just have a hard time with that part of it, knowing that the image of their daughter. What is my mic? Is this my voice? <laughs> 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 the image of their is this better? Yeah. Oh God, I was like, I am losing my mind. I'm hearing these other voices in my head. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yes, knowing that that image of their daughter um, dead, uh, even though it's not their daughter, but you know, still in their mind as a parent, that for me of everything, that was the hardest. It's just my heart going out to them and. Um, Family members. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. To get back to your question, I think the main, uh, I didn't want to be the killer, you know? <laughs> I, did not, I did not want it to be me. I said, if it can be anybody else, Ben Horn looks good to me. You know? <laughs> to be anybody else, but not me, please. Okay. I, I just uh, I had my own little baby daughter. She was like uh, two years old at the time, and the whole idea of uh, being the murderer of my daughter on the show uh, was just uh, didn't sit right with me. In fact, uh, I, I had some bad nights uh, thinking about it, and uh, at one point, I even considered uh, not doing it, not doing the show. The reveal show. And then David called us all into that room. You know, it was Cheryl and myself and Richard Beamer, Ben Horn, Mark Frost, David Lynch. They were all sitting cross legged on the floor. And it was a dark room, devoid of furniture, had a lava lamp, I think, in the corner. <laughs> um, you know, one of those, you know, that's what, that's what it was. Yeah, like a waterfall lava. <laughs> And so I sat down cross-legged on the floor and, and David reached over and he said, uh, Ray, <laughs> it's you, it was always you. <laughs> and I thought, oh man, I believe I said S-H-I-T uh, out loud at that moment. And then he proceeded to say, but Ray, it's going to be a beautiful thing. And he, and he went on to explain how uh, it was going to happen and how I was going to die and 
I would die in the arms of Cooper and he would be reciting the Tibetan Book of the Dead and, and I would be looking down a long, terrible tunnel and at the end of that tunnel would be a white light and standing in that white light would be my daughter, Laura. And she would have her arms out to me and she would forgive me. Mm -hmm. Ah, I get, uh, I get, I get weird every time I even <laughs> talk about it. But um, um, David explained it so beautifully that uh, I said, "Okay, let's do it, man. Let's go." <laughs> um, down the road, and uh, it was a memorable episode. Uh, Tim Hunter directed it, and. And uh, the water was sprinkling down on me, and and Kyle was great, and uh, um, it was redeeming for me as a as a human being, not only as an actor. And so it made it all all right. And then I was glad to leave the show. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I was never glad to leave the show. I didn't want to leave town. I love these people, uh, but I had to. Came back in the last episode with uh, white contacts and uh, <laughs> acting very strangely, and, uh, but I was grateful for it, you know. Yeah. Yes, sir. Do you have any Ohio productions, right? <laughs> do, you have, do you have any Ohio connections? <laughs> do I have any Ohio connections? Columbus connections. Hi. Oh yeah, oh yeah, as a matter of fact I do, yeah. I was here in 1967, way back when. I was at, uh, I was an, an apprentice actor at uh, Kenley Players. It was at Veterans Memorial Auditorium, I think it was. Yeah, and uh, for a whole summer, and um, and that, I got, that's where I started developing my chops as an actor, and I played small parts. I was in Philadelphia Story with George Hamilton, and uh, on a clear day you can see forever with Shirley Jones, and playing small parts, you know, and uh, Barefoot in the Park with Jessica Walter and George Maharis, and uh, I played the Lord and Taylor delivery man. This guy was about 90 years old, and I was 20, I think, at the time. A lot of heavy makeup. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that, 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 that sort of got me started, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with the loss of Peggy Lipton, recently. the recent loss of Peggy Lipton and, and the actors that have gone on from Twin Peaks that, that we have lost, like oh yeah, so you had, yeah, you keep in was, contact uh, and when you're close. Well, Peggy was a beautiful human being and uh, a wonderful, just a wonderful person to know and to be around. She was a very, you know, she's a very spiritual lady and and, and a, a very, a very, very fine actress and. Uh, Missed her and Miss Jack Nance. Yeah. Yeah. The original, she's wrapped in plastic. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, uh, yeah, poor and, Jack. And Catherine also. Catherine Lord Lady, yeah. Uh, for me, Catherine and Peggy had a similar bright, bright light that just seemed like it could never possibly go out yeah. um so it didn't yeah but yeah um thank you for your well, you know, we, were, we were pretty close but you know we really were and um when we did the pilot we had no idea it would ever amount to anything really we just knew that what we were doing felt kind of special and and that uh, we were we felt we were doing good work but we had no idea how it would be accepted by the public i mean on abc 
Can you imagine that? <laughs> so the uh, the the scene or uh, yes, yeah, we got one right here. And one. Uh, the scene you mentioned ABC is the when Seymour Maddy was killed. The fact that that was shown on network TV and just like that, and such a yeah. I mean, they, ABC let that happen. That was awesome. Yeah, and it wasn't an awesome thing. It was just a <laughs> uh, let's see, Were you right? The glasses. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> You got just a bit. Well, I did extensive research, especially once I knew um, that we were going to do the film. And I also was in brilliant hands with David as a director. And I had genius people playing my parents, Grace and Ray. Um, and you did it. <laughs> well, I, I need to also give credit to the to people who wrote wonderful, complex female characters Ooh, yeah. at a time when, you know, I mean, as a woman, to be even able to read a script that has a female character that is that complex and that layered and has that many sides to her. That is a gift, just to even get to read a script like that, because they're not as common as we wish they were. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, honey. What's your name? Leslie. Leslie, that's right. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you so much. I have kind of an odd question. Um, in Secret Diary of Laura Palmer, Laura Palmer said, uh, the character says that she's going to save a tiny part of herself, and hide it from Bob and keep it and for herself and protect it. And uh, I feel like that's what the angel is that's escaping at the end of fire walk with me and I feel like it's also the same character that you did in uh, Wild at Heart, the the, 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 uh, good, the, 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 uh, the good witch. The good witch. And it's like there's this goodness that is rising out of all the badness that we're trying to lay on. It's just this amazing goodness that rises out of the evil. Mm. I feel like it's, I don't know if that's actually a question. <laughs> uh, all I can say is, right now on planet Earth, I am so grateful to be reminded of that every moment of my life. So thank you for that. That goodness can rise out of all the people. Yeah. I want to thank you both very much for doing very, very much. <laughs> Can we, uh, so we're going to go about 10 more minutes, so I want to just real quick, kind of like as we go to the questions, question, 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 and we'll get as many answers as we can, so. <laughs> you. Uh, Ray. Yeah. Your character was kind of like a Dr. Jack or Mr. Hyde, but you were good. Oh. Kind of. <laughs> 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 I never looked at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 yeah. Well, I don't know, you know, I just, I, I just, in, in, in my head, I just did whatever I had to do to get, to get ready for the next scene. Sometimes it meant I had to go off in a corner, in a dark corner, and just stare at the corner, <laughs> get away from everybody and everything. Uh, other times, you know, I could be a little lighter about it and, and walk around and sing a song and uh, Leland had a lot of light moments, you know. Oh, yeah. 
and he sure loved to sing, you know. Yeah. And, 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 you might need to right now. Uh, well, no, I really. Oh, Oh, now the words sound clear and funny to your ear. A little bit jumpy and jivey. Say mares eat oats and does eat oats and little lambs eat ivy. Oh, mousey does and dozy does and little lambs eat ivy. A kiddly divey too, wouldn't you? A kiddly divey too, wouldn't you? And then, of course, I sang. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, All right, next question. Come on, get Who has a question that never gets to ask a question? You? Go ahead. Please. We'll get you, buddy. So, like Mike, I watched Twin Peaks when I was way too young. So, Fire Walk with me when I was nine. When you were nine? <laughs> oh. well, uh huh. And, and but you turned out well. Okay. Um, for me, this kind of goes back to the question earlier. Is this my Is it me? It's my voice. Okay. Um, when I played Laura, I I knew her story. I knew her story inside and out, and um, like I said, did extensive research. Um, <laughs> there you go. But I, as I've gotten older, now three decades older, and a parent, and um, the thing that has, I don't know that it's changed as that it's deepened and expanded in me, is my heartbreak of how often Laura's story happens in real life every single day to so many people. And I don't understand how those statistics from 30 years ago, 35 years ago, to now have not gone down. And that's a question for our whole world. Mm -hmm. Tired of that one. I think it's a nasty little mic. <laughs> yeah. Well, on a lighter note, yes. Um, I'm just curious. Acting methods. Meisner, Stella Adler, Hagen. Is there anything that you prescribe to? A mixture of anything? I'm just curious what's in your actor toolbox. What? Acting school. What? Do you have any training? <laughs> no, I'll tell you, I did this show in New York in 1982, uh, this rock and roll show, and I played this rock singer, and uh, and the band blew up my left ear. Oh. Yeah, I, I played it for about nine months, you know, and uh, my hearing's never been the same since, so. And I should get one of those little hearing aids, you know, that you can't see, and, and stick it all the way in the ear. Like Gordon Cole. <laughs> yeah, like Gordon Cole. Yeah! <laughs> Hey, Cooper!
Oh, that's what it was? <laughs> See, I didn't even hear what she was saying. I was actually making a joke, which rarely happens. <laughs> Our acting, you ask about our acting training? Yeah. Um, I just I just started doing it when I was about 13. And I learned from others at, at Columbus and Kenley. It uh, was a big uh, summer for me. And, uh, and uh, I was a theater major at Kent State University. Wow. And I, I graduated from there in 1969. And, and then I went right to New York and everybody was telling me, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have you know, we'll drive cabs and wait tables for about five years. Yeah. Well, I walked into an audition at CBS, an open audition. Oh. I got the job. Yeah. Yeah. It was a soap opera called Love of Life. I started it in 1970, and uh, I, went, I did about 900 episodes, and uh, left that show in 1977, and went out to California to seek my fortune. And, uh, and uh, that's... That's how it all began. I just kept doing it and learning, learning from other people. And I still, to this day, all the actors that I work with, I learn from. And I learn sometimes what not to do and a lot of times what to do, so. Um, this is for Cheryl. So uh, your character ends up having like two fates. There's the one in this where she's killed by uh, her father, right? And then there's the one at the end of the return where like Cooper goes back and stops her from being killed and she turns into Carrie Page. Uh, which of those two do you think is the best like send off for that character? Hmm. But did you just say she turned into Carrie Page? Sort of, yeah. Sort of, right? Is that what we they don't call know. her that. I mean, I don't know. Do you know? I, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what it seemed like. I don't know. <laughs> See, this is what I love about it, is getting to hear what you guys think. <laughs> I love that he's so close, because I heard every word that he said. <laughs> we so, somehow uh, get all the questions I'll this. just answer very, very, very briefly. Um, what I think the story is might be completely different than what David thinks the story is, and what you think the story is, and what he thinks the story is, and what he thinks the story is. And I think that's one of the coolest things about David. And that it may change, I may, I may, I may change my mind like seven more times. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, he, he influenced, it's hard to know like which, it's a thing of which comes first because I, I think he always has had a huge impact and influence on me creatively and as an artist and always will, he's my, one of my greatest teachers um, and working with him in that way taught was like me getting a degree. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I always was looking for complex characters, and I, I always wanted multi-dimensional female characters um, thank you so much and i and i always hoped to do something different than i had last done so that i could grow and um, learn and stretch out of my comfort zone we have time for about three to five more quick questions so let's go here so it's pretty well known that uh series that uh, Mark and David really didn't want to solve the murder of Laura Palmer. Right. Um, so when that decision finally came, how much like smoke and mirrors was there with David and Mark, if at all, 
And what was that kind of battle like? Have you had any insight with ABC leading up to that decision? Um, it was always a, a strange thing because uh, as we did the pilot and as the show, show progressed, um, David and Mark would see things that they wanted to develop more and uh, and they would. And, and, and they saw that uh, my, my character was so vulnerable and, and they made him do some, you know, crazy things things out of grief and uh and then they saw that it worked out okay so let's do even some more stuff like that and and that's sort of the way they played it from week to week to week to week and uh you're right david never wanted to find out who the killer was um he wanted it to go on and on and on and abc uh that time it was owned and operated by capital cities and uh I don't think they liked the show really from the get-go. <laughs> but you know, that's the way big corporations are sometimes. And um, But they were forced to put it on the air because everybody you know, liked that pilot so much. And, and uh, so they kept bugging David and Mark, you know, uh, to find somebody, you know, <laughs> pin it on somebody. <laughs> You know, so, and, and then we'll move on. We'll do other stuff, you know? And, uh, well, it was a little too premature, I think. And uh, so it gave also a cap, uh, reason for Cap Cities not to keep the show on the air for very much longer. You know, so after, you know, after the 30 episodes, yeah. and then uh, David hadn't had his fill of it, so he, he wanted to do Fire Walk with me. And, uh, and we were very happy to to come back. Yeah. And then again, from 25 years, I'll see you in 25 years. The fact that that landed at the time it did. Yeah. Incredible. Wow. You know, Isn't so. it, yeah. Uh, Firewalk to me is such a emotional powerful film. Yeah. Uh, I've watched the film over the years. It's just such raw emotion. Is there a particular scene for either of you in that, that you really felt just like you were lost in the character and you just felt like the emotion coming over you? Because I mean, every time I watch it, I'm just more and more entranced by just the, the level of intensity. I think that just goes back to what I was saying about working with brilliant actors, you know, just to, to just watch and listen and respond. Really, acting is just listening and responding and being completely present in the moment and to be able to be present in the moment with people like Ray and Grace and everyone else that David brought together. Um, I feel like I was always lost in it in a way. Yeah. It, it was a living, breathing thing all on its own. Yeah. Um, yeah, and because of that it came, a lot of it came so easy. It, it, it felt like you know, like our own lives. It felt like second nature. It all just sort of flowed. And uh, I remember when I, you know, I'm, I'm holding her graduation picture and, and doing a little dance and crying. And, and then I, I smack, you know, Grace comes in and I smash that picture and I, and I actually cut my thumb for real. And, and, uh, and I bled all over that picture. And it was, a, you know, one of those uh, real uh, apocalypse now moments, you know. <laughs> And uh, uh, the whole the whole thing was sort of like that. We had we had great moments like that that just came out. It just flowed, and, right? Yeah, <laughs> you back there in the hat. I've got uh, two questions. Uh, first one is uh, for both of you: What is the uh, what is the weirdest note that you got from David Miller? Uh, second is. How, was that? how did you get involved with Tim and Eric, and how was that experience? Oh God! <laughs> I did their, I did their, their tele, you know, their uh, show. I, I did office hugs for them, and uh, uh, I showed how to get, how to give a proper office hug. And then, uh, see, Tim and Eric were big fans of Twin Peaks. This is how I got 
much of my work during the 90s. You know, people, if they didn't give me the job, they at least wanted to meet me, you know. And, uh, a lot of, yeah, and I like uh, Diane Keaton, she directed an episode, but after I was gone, so she was doing this TV movie. So she called me in, you know, to maybe play the father. And uh, she gave the part to Bo Bridges. <laughs> and and uh, I think she just wanted to say, you know, see me and say hello. And, and that happened quite a few times. But other times, they actually gave me the job and I was, uh, I was thrilled when that happened. Love Bo Bridges. The humor oh, in the show. Yes. Oh, yeah, we were aware of the humor in the oh, show, yeah, well, yeah. even while we were doing it. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. Did, I thought that was awesome, and I loved it. I just laugh in my head when I watch it, but everybody else was laughing. You can laugh out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I learned how to speak a little Norwegian, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Forgotten it since, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I was wondering, after being in a David Lynch film, is it hard to recover and get back to normal? <laughs> I have definitely not gotten back to normal. <laughs> if I ever even started at normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huge, there is a huge recovery time now. Um, <laughs> no, well, she needed a couple of weeks just to, to get some sleep, really, yeah. actually, because. Yeah, and it just, uh, it is, it is, um, it's a very different way of working creatively than um, working with David and working on this show and working on this character is a different way of working than a lot of other jobs. And so um, it requires a different part of my brain and a different skill set and a different part of my like for example going to work in the red room right mm -hmm. that's a very different part of creativity than going to play a doctor on a show mm -hmm. so neither one is harder or different or better or worse it's just very different so um, there is just recovery Recovery time, but there's recovery time for uh, for a lot of jobs too. But yeah, with, with this character. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, How I Met Your Mother is a little easier to do, than, uh, <laughs> and I did do that, and I and I do Fresh Off the Boat now. It's on ABC now, and uh, and, uh, and you know, uh, David David is such he sets a very high bar. And not many um, movie directors uh, come close to it. There are some, but not many. And uh, he's truly a, a, a very remarkable, original individual in all in all respects. He's a he's a he's a true Renaissance man, and and uh, he he does his own thing, and he really doesn't care what the rest of the world thinks. And, and the fact that you, uh, you you think along his lines thrills him to no end. He's thrilled by it. All right, yeah, we got one more. So we have time for one more. Yeah. Do you think Fire Walk With Me would have benefited from having Laura Flynn Boyle play Donna? No. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm hearing lots of people talking at one time. And so I can't understand what's being said. You think it would have been benefited if Lara Flynn Boyle had played Donna in the movie? I, instead of Mara? Ma Ma oh, I, I don't know why she didn't. I don't know. Um, and I thought Lara Flynn Boyle did an incredible job. And I thought Moira did an incredible job. So 
and I loved working with both of them, and they both have a special place in my heart. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> All right, well, thank you uh, for your questions, and we are... <laughs> uh -oh. All right, we got You know what? We're going to have one more question. Yes. Yes. Take them out. <laughs> okay, right there. Yes. I was talking to James and then I went to sleep. Maybe the Heather Graham dream right yeah, before Heather that. Oh. <laughs> you all just saw this movie. <laughs> was, was it a continuous shot? Like, did you see me do the cocaine and then go straight to bed? Was there any editing? I agree with you, that's not going to happen in my life. So that's why I'm thinking, now I want to see the scene, because I know there's something there. I think an editor should have got fired. But it was like, nap for 15 minutes and then get up and go out all night. It's funny she has the crazy Maybe dream that, that she was... puts the picture on the wall with the open door. Mm. She does these lines of cocaine, lays down, and then has that whole dream sequence where Heather Graham's in the bed next to her. Yeah, so maybe she wasn't sleeping. Yeah, maybe she wasn't sleeping. <laughs> I don't know. Really great point. I'll take it up with David next time I see it. So you're saying do three lines of cocaine and Heather Graham appears? <laughs> 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 Say that again. <laughs> 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 All right. So anyway, moving onward. Uh, we're, okay, we got to get uh, the autograph session going. So the way we're going to do this in an organized fashion is we are going to.